Well, hello everyone. This is Javier. Welcome to the channel. So we're back from our trip in Thailand, spending a month traveling through some parts of Isan. And in this video, we're going to do a breakdown of our monthly cost of living. So stay tuned for the detail. If you're new to the channel, welcome. You're watching Retire Recharge Rome. And as you can see, we've got the beautiful mountains uh, of Vang Vien behind us. We came out here and spent a week. And while we were here, we got to enjoy the Bung Bang Phai or the Rocket Festival. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure and check that one out. So for today, we're going to go through our travels through Isan, Thailand, and just document our monthly cost of living while we're out there. That there would be some good information. I know some viewers have asked about some of that detail, so we're going to share that with you in this video. Okay, so if you've seen our cost of living video of living in Laos, then you're familiar with the level of detail that I will share. But basically, I'm going to go through and discuss the main spending categories that we saw while we were on our travels through Thailand. I'll share that with you and you can use that for your own uh, research and background if you're planning a trip to Thailand or maybe just good comparison sake. All right, so to start out, if you look at our breakdown of spend, you'll see that about half of our spend for the month was around food and accommodations. So between what we call restaurants and guest houses, that was about half of what our spend was for the month. If you look at our restaurant spend, so that was right around 14,000 baht. And so you see from our video on our Isan travels that we ate at everything from the local restaurants in the various cities that we stayed to trying some of the food in the local markets and even trying some of the Western food at a couple of different restaurants. So we had a pretty good variety and that ranged across different price points, which you'll see reflected in the overall cost number for our restaurant spend category. I'll say that when we were in Thailand, we did a lot of visits to some of the local grocery stores, such as the, the Lotus. I think the big ones are the, uh, the Lotus, there's the Lotus and there's the Big C. So most of the places uh, that we stayed at, there was at least a Lotus uh, nearby. So we got a good chance to, to go there and buy groceries uh, for the various snacks, or if we wanted to have breakfast the next morning, this is a good way to make sure that we had some, some food available in our guest house. And so walking around through the Lotus, for example, I think you'll, you know, I'll show some of this in the video. But I think what we saw was pretty decent uh, prices on most of the food there, which for us was comparable to what we typically see in Laos. I think the seafood was definitely uh, more competitive in cost, but everything else was pretty close in cost when you look at the two between Thailand and Laos. And I've got a separate video comparing Thailand versus Laos, but getting back to our spend for restaurants and food. Yeah, that's basically what we saw. Uh, so we would typically, when we arrived in one particular city or village, uh, we would typically go to the local Lotus or Big C, take a walk around, get our groceries for the two or three days that we were there, and at least know that we'd have some um, supplies that could get us through either breakfast or snacks throughout the day, you know, those sorts of things. The other thing is most of the guest houses that we stayed at uh, had at least a uh, small refrigerator, uh, that, so that actually also made it easy. Uh, typically most guest houses that you'll see in uh, Southeast Asia, so areas in Thailand or Laos will typically have uh, both a small cooler or a small refrigerator as well as uh, a water kettle. So we made sure to, to make the most use of that, uh, buying things like the mama noodle or the, uh, the joke or the rice porridge. Uh, 
make sure that was available if we were uh, thinking of staying in for breakfast, which we did on occasion, and also storing drinks and what have you in the small cooler or refrigerator. So that came in pretty handy, actually, in most places that we visited and we stayed at. So again, walking through most of the uh, local grocery stores, I think what we found is they're very similar and very typical what you would find in North America with uh, a slant or you know some things that are unique to what shopping is like in Southeast Asia. Uh, in terms of the food uh, that's available and maybe the different flavors. But for the most part, you know, you walk in around and walking through a Lotus or a Big C is similar to what you might experience walking through, let's say, a, I'm thinking about America, so walking through a Walmart or a, a Randall's or a Ralph's, depending on what part of the U.S. you're from or North America. So, in fact, walking through the Lotus, yeah, they had much more than just groceries. Uh, they also had various different kinds of appliances and what have you. So, well, actually, we were able to stop in and, and get a, a water kettle at one point in our travels um, to make things a little bit easier. Just in case we were in a guest house where that wasn't available. But again, for getting things like fruit and those kind of snacks, uh, the grocery stores came in pretty handy for us. And then walking through most of the rest of the store, you can see just again the variety of different things that are available. Uh, pretty interesting. Yeah, it's pretty interesting and pretty amazing. The selection and the variety of uh, shopping that you can do all in this one store. Again, it, to me it felt like no different than being in a large uh, super Walmart or those sorts of things. So you can see this Lotus even had a little coffee shop that was pretty uh, convenient and pretty interesting. Again, all in one store. So everything from having the gold shop in the store to having a place where you can get your your eyes, your eyeglasses, uh, and even your mobile phone. So yeah, pretty much had everything, which is pretty convenient and and easy, which makes sense. I think in most of these villages, it makes sense to have a one-stop shop for everything to make it easier. As well as uh, besides, we talked about the restaurants and the markets, but there was also in Thailand, which is different from Lao, the various uh, fast food shops. And most every Lotus that I saw had an MK restaurant as well as uh, KFC, which we went to a KFC one day, and a Mr. Donut, which is great. Uh, great to see. This one even had uh, sushi available. If you had a hankering or a craving for some sushi, And there was the all-present Dairy Queen, if you wanted some dessert. Which I think they even have the durian flavor Dairy Queen ice cream cone. For those of you that are curious, KFC in Thailand is pretty darn good. Uh, we did go to KFC one day for a meal, and you can see the price is pretty reasonable. For a family meal, I think we paid 189 baht, I believe is what the price was. What makes KFC different in Thailand is it's got kind of a spicy kick to it, so it's pretty tasty. While we were in Udon, we also went to the Central Plaza and walked around. So that's a nice place. Variety of food, a selection of various different things. Their food court is pretty great. So we, while we were in Udon, we went to the food court once or twice and um, selected from the different variety of food that was available there. Again, your kind of standard 
uh, regional food. We had some, I believe that was some patsu, which was pretty tasty. And chicken rice, noodle soups were actually also pretty good. Yeah, it was all pretty, pretty tasty. So we made pretty good use of that while we were in, in Udon and passing through. In some cases, uh, you know, I think we really enjoyed the local cuisine with the local Thai food. And every village was a little bit different in terms of what that cuisine looked like. But going through Isan, it was all pretty tasty. And of course, we had our taste of the various local markets. In my opinion, the local markets are some of the best some of the best places to go to because you can get uh, the, the food that you know is fresh. It's all fresh, freshly prepared that day and in front of you, and it's all pretty tasty and inexpensive. That's good. That's very good. Mm -hmm. That's very good. Okay. Over your foot. Wow. Lao, yeah. Good This is Lao, yeah. Ah, so by day. In terms of accommodations, you'll see that we stayed at a variety, of, a range of different types of accommodations during our trip. Uh, we're pretty, um, pretty standard. So on average, our spend was about 450 baht per day for accommodation um, total. We spent a little under 14,000 baht, so 13,750 baht on accommodations for the month, or about $375 for the month. If you look at that from a daily standpoint, we were spending, on average, again, about 450 baht, or about $13 a day for accommodation, which was great. Uh, I mean, this is just staying at a guest house at a nightly rate also. I think if we had stayed in one place for an entire month, we could have probably negotiated an even better rate than that. But again, that gives you an idea. For us, spending under $400 for the month, moving around at different places and staying at different guest houses, that's a great affordable way to get by in Thailand. The next one on our list is shopping. So this is our third highest category for our travels through the month. We were a little bit in travel mode or vacation mode as we were traveling. So I'd say that's why our spend was higher than it might be if we were just, if this was just kind of an average month living in Thailand long term. But we spent 7,780 baht, or just under 8,000 baht, or about $212 US for shopping for the month. And so that was everything from clothing. We did buy some, some various clothing, um, pieces of apparel, that sort of thing. There was one weekend when we were staying in Tabul, just outside of Nongkai, where our niece and nephew came to visit us for the weekend. So while we were there, we went swimming. So we bought some swimsuits and we also bought some gifts for our sister and brother-in-law. So again, more vacation mode. So I'd expect that shopping category would be lower in a normal month if we were staying long-term in Thailand. We did have a category for fuel. So we drove our family car from Lao to Thailand and drove across Isan. So for us, the cost of fuel for the car was 4,300 baht, or about $118 US. So not bad. I think overall the average cost of fuel in Thailand while we were there was about 40 baht to the liter. So a little bit over a dollar US per liter, or $4 a gallon. But pretty reasonable if you can think about that so it's spending 118 dollars or 120 dollars for transportation for the month was not a bad deal and next was our groceries so we talked about the fact that most of our food spend was around uh, going to restaurants and the local markets 
We did also do some shopping at the grocery stores. So the Lotus and Big C are the big ones in Thailand that, in the areas that we were at. So between Lotus and Big C and 7-Eleven, we spent a total of about 4,200 baht, which translates to about $115 US for groceries. And you'll see, and if you saw our video on traveling through Isan, you'll see that we did do a lot of grocery shopping to uh, to buy goods for either preparing breakfast in the morning or to have fruit or snacks available during the day while we were in the guest house if we were staying in for for the day or for the evening that sort of thing so not bad considering that so if you think about it then between our groceries and food then we were spending about 18,000 baht or about $500 US for the month. Gives you an idea of what our total uh, food cost was. Next item for us was donations. So we did a lot of uh, traveling and visiting to the various temples across uh, the region of Thailand that we're at in Isan. And so every visit for us meant also donating, uh, doing uh, tambun, or donating to the temple. Everyone was just a little bit. Typically we would donate maybe 100 baht or so every time we visited a temple. But total uh, for us for the month was about 2,800 baht or about $78 US for temple donations. Um, so you have to decide for yourself if you're gonna be traveling, if that's gonna be a cost, but for us, it was a, a cost that was built in to our travel budget. And because we were, again, driving into Thailand from Laos, we also purchased insurance for our car in Thailand. So that was a one-time cost of 2,600 baht, or about $71 US. That insurance is good for the year, so it's just like buying your, your annual insurance. Uh, but it, now it covers us in the vehicle for if we're ever traveling again in Thailand over the next 12 months. So we thought it was a worthwhile investment. I've got a category around spend for attractions. And actually, that was primarily um, what we spent for, I'll call it tours or admission fees to any, any uh, particular site. That was a total cost of 1,900 baht, but of that 1,900, 1,700 baht of that was a tour that we booked to go through Hin Samwan. So that was the three whale rock tour. As we traveled, we had uh, you have to book uh, transport to get you up the mountain in Hin Samwan if you're going to go visit that, and then we also booked the full uh, tour that dropped or stopped at six different locations uh, on the mountain as we were coming back down. So it was a great tour. It also included uh, some drone footage while we were on top of the mountain. So it's pretty amazing. Uh, watch that video if you're interested, but I would highly recommend going to Hin Samwan, first of all, but then also book in uh, one or more of those tours. We booked the entire package, the full package, which was 1700 baht so that was a bulk of our attraction cost and i believe we had another 200 baht that included some other admission fees to um, a few other places so total was 1900 baht for our attractions for the month we had a light item for coffee so i broke out coffee shops because that's an important part we like to go to coffee shops in the morning do that sort of thing so we spent 470 baht or about $13 US on going to coffee shops. And so I believe that typically the cost of coffee is about 60, 50 to 60 Thai baht, or $1.50 to $1.60 US for a coffee. Another important item that we've got here is our cost for SIM cards. So I broke that out just because it's important enough. Um, what we did was when we traveled into Thailand, we stopped at a 7-Eleven. And at any 7-Eleven or grocery store, you can buy a SIM card. Uh, 
prepaid SIM card, which is what we did. So for 199 bot, you can buy a SIM card that has virtually, it's virtually un, unlimited uh, data. I think it had something like maybe 80 gigs or 100 gigs worth of data for us to use for the month. So between the two of us then, we spent about 400 bots or $10, close to $11 US for pretty much unlimited data for a month, which I thought was a great deal. Um, where else, well, where, where in the US can you buy, can you get an unlimited data package for $5, which is exactly what it was. So pretty good deal for us. Uh, there are other ways to do data if you're traveling across Southeast Asia. So you can also do eSIMs. That's another commonly used way of um, making sure that you've got data set up for your for your phone. But for us, it was just as convenient to stop at a 7-Eleven and get a SIM card. And then the final cost for us was the just the documentation for our vehicle. So I'll call it the Visa for the the car it was it's I, I think here they call it a yellow passport book or something like that so we paid 200 baht to take care of all the documentation that would label enable us to legally drive our car from Lao into thailand so 200 baht is about 550 five dollars and fifty cents us and um now i believe it's now i believe that we have that documentation so I believe that's a one-time cost, and then, so now we can take it back in any time over the next 12 months and use that same document for travel into Thailand. Okay, so that's a summary of our costs for the month. So that's our cost of living for traveling through Thailand for 30 days, basically. Flash up the entire summary so you can see what everything looked like. So our total cost was 52000 864 Thai baht, or just under 53,000 Thai baht, or about $1,400 US. And I'll say maybe a couple caveats there. Um, we had our own automobile, so we had our own transportation to get around um, Thailand, which made it pretty convenient and actually, I think, pretty affordable. Although transportation in general, I think, is pretty affordable in, in Thailand, so you can't go wrong. Uh, any way that you you get around the country we stuck in for the most part to local markets and groceries but we did also do quite a bit of eating out in restaurants so I, I i'll say we didn't skimp on on the food side as you can see at that cost being about 400 dollars us <clears throat> for going to restaurants and markets and our guest house or our, our accommodation was we we're able to find pretty good rates on our accommodations. So averaging about 450 Thai baht or uh, about $13 US. So that about sums it up. Uh, let me know. I'd like to hear or read some comments from some of the your viewers about your own experiences or maybe you've got your own uh, suggestions or tips and tricks for people that are gonna be traveling through Thailand. So that does it for our video. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for watching. Please don't forget to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. And we will see you in the next video.